I believe our high tide was at 1 a.m. And I was not about to get up and come out here at 1 a.m. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but the high tide was at like 11 feet, I think. Something like that. And I think this is the lowest tide of the month, I think. Low tide is in about 15 minutes. And it's down almost four feet. It's muddy here. <laughs> but I wanted to come out and check out super low tide. I am actually really surprised that that did not get these socks wet. <laughs> these are very old hiking shoes and by no means are they waterproof. Um, but my feet are still dry. Winning! Surprisingly, it's difficult to navigate. <laughs> You can't really see the next pool until you get over and then kind of trying to figure out how to get farther out and then you just run into another body of water. <laughs> Maybe I'm just an idiot. And it would be a miracle if I get out of here without twisting an ankle. I don't think it's a dead animal. <laughs> I'm surprised that I touched this thing. It looks like hair or fur. And I mean, we do have bears and deer and uh, sea otters and stuff here, but it appears to be, sorry, it's kind of upside down. There's the rock and the base and the plant. It's a plant. It's another, like, I bet it's called something super creative, like sea otter fur kelp. <laughs> that definitely looks like fur though, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe later today or tomorrow, I will go to the Sitka Sound Science Center. And I bet they have answers to all of the questions as far as what the heck am I looking at? <laughs> I know nothing of, uh, Pacific cold water tides and plants and whatever all of this is, so maybe I can come back in after this <laughs> after this adventure and uh, explain a little bit more about what I'm looking at so we can both learn some things. <laughs> like the seaweed is ginormous. It's all over the place but it's still attached here at the bottom. And I just imagine that all this stuff comes back to life basically in six hours when the tide comes back, but. Let's see, I'm 5'5", five five, and I'm gonna call that about four foot. Scientific measurement right there. It's neat how it attaches though. It doesn't look like a plant. It looks like a vein. And you've got these little things that look like they're full of air. Maybe that helps. Maybe they're full of water. Maybe that helps them. S yeah, there's little air bubbles in there. Maybe that helps them survive when they're exposed like this. That one. And then you got these things. I don't want to pull on anything because it's all attached and alive, so I'm really trying not to step on a bunch of stuff, but 
It almost feels like a tongue, <laughs> the way that it's textured. It's all very interesting. Looks like something you'd buy at the grocery store to put on a salad. like what they do but I've never picked one up before I don't want to mess him up but I don't think he's gonna make it if he just stays out here that is if it's even still alive it's kind of hard to tell all right dude you and all your rocks can come too hi Patrick Story time. When I was in high school, I was a volunteer at the zoo back home and I worked a lot <laughs> as a volunteer and I won an award for having the most volunteer hours that year. And part of the award was this um, pin, like what you put on your clothing, and it was a little starfish. Sorry, it was called a sea star. I believe they're called sea stars, not starfish. I digress. Um, there's another one. So in the story, um, there's another sea star. So I'm going to move this one whilst I tell the story of the sea star. After the seaplane takes off. <laughs> Okay, back to the story. I really don't like talking over seaplanes or any kind of loud noise, really. I don't need to yell over that. Anyway, so I got this award. Ugh, this one feels weird. <laughs> I don't know how to tell if they're alive or not, but I guess if they're still grabbing onto stuff, does that mean they're alive? Again, we're never gonna get to the story. <laughs> so I got this little pin that you put on your clothing and it was a sea star, and it was on this uh, note card, and the note card had a story on it about sea stars that I'm gonna tell you right now. Oh, that didn't really work. I should probably put them out farther, huh? Damn it. My sock is wet now. Maybe at the Sitka Sound Science Center, they can tell me if it is pointless to throw them back or not. Um, and I know they're slow, but like, wouldn't they still be faster than a falling tide? And they'd be able to like, make their way into deeper water? I don't know, maybe I'm giving them too much credit. All right, so the story says that there is a little boy and his grandpa, and they are walking along the beach, and there are sea stars um, that are sick and are washed up, and they are on the beach dying. And the little boy is going along, and he's picking up the sea stars, and he's throwing them back into the ocean. And his grandpa looks at him, and it says, you know, you can move as many of those sea stars back into the ocean, but you'll never make a difference. And little boy just smiles and picks up the next one and throws it back into the ocean. Looks over at his grandpa and he tells him, I made a difference to that one.
This is actually the mouth of the Indian River. I suppose I'll have to come back uh, when the tide is up and show you that this is actually a river. Okay, you can tell by looking at like this debris here. This is like in the plants, obviously. Um, this is kind of where the tide normally is, like the highest tide. And then there's another line here with the grass. And yeah, there's like no water here right now. I wonder what kind of grass this is. It just looks like normal grass at first. Um, but it's down here with some seaweed and there's standing water, so it definitely gets submerged. It's got very, very thick leaves. The whole thing is a lot, I don't know, more dense than I expected. And then I realized that it was in time-lapse. <laughs> Basically all I was trying to explain was that from here you can kind of see how it is a maze and while you're down there it is difficult to navigate. And then I made fun of myself a little bit but whatever. That's all I was saying. And this is the part when I would twist my ankle and not a seaplane just a regular plane but in this area with the way the mountains and the water and everything is everything echoes and it's really loud in here um, the planes and the boats are always really loud and it is about 8 45 there are other people starting to come out <laughs> and the tide is coming in so I gotta hurry and get out of here the only hurry is that I am hungry and I need to get this week's episode posted. So I'm gonna get on my bicycle. I'm gonna go back to the house and I'm gonna get my computer and then I'm gonna go downtown and use some Wi-Fi and have some breakfast and come up with something interesting to show you guys this week. My footage from the Fortress of the Bear is not working. So while I uh, try to rectify that situation, please enjoy these time-lapse videos, sorry, hyper-lapse videos of some of the sea creatures uh, from the Sitka Sound Science Center. have not been able to find a d definitive answer on whether you should throw back starfish or not. Um, most of them seem like they could survive low tide, and the general consensus is placing them back in the ocean is not going to kill them. Sorry, my results are inconclusive. And this poor decorator crab getting smushed by this very pushy and attention-seeking fish and it leaves and then another fish comes in and also squishes the crab <laughs> and this is what the Indian River looks like with the tide in it looks like a river 
And where I was standing before is somewhere kind of out in this area.